everybody, this is Jonathan, your fitness business management expert, and in this video, I'm going to address a topic that I think will cover a lot of questions that I've gotten recently, uh, especially as it pertains to actually running a boot camp and what exercises you should and should not be doing. Quick uh, step back, I've actually been uh, messing around with this in my mind for a couple of weeks as I initially started off with a something called the creativity safety scale, which basically said the more creative an exercise is, the less safe it can be. And I was going to run with that idea until I started to think to myself, well, when you have clients that have pre-existing injuries, you are essentially being more creative with how you have them do exercises, thereby making the exercises more safe. So it's not necessarily a case of creativity making an exercise more safe or less safe. It's really just about understanding what exercises and how you implement them into your program um, you're doing to make sure that your clients are as safe as possible. Now, in my position as a boot camp owner, I will routinely have people coming in from other boot camps, from classes at their local gym, or from personal training sessions, and they'll tell me, hey, you know, we did this exercise at our gym, you know, maybe we should do this at the boot camp. Sometimes I listen, sometimes I don't. Well, sometimes I implement, sometimes I don't. I always listen because I think it's a great idea for you to be exchanging ideas with other trainers and with your clients because, you know, they're your target audience and you want to know and you want to give them what they want. But you always have to remain in control, understanding what's good for your personal training session and your boot camp. And I think this may gear a little bit more toward boot camp owners and group trainers, but I think this is something to consider for personal trainers as well. Because I essentially came up with a scale which is the um, simplicity safety scale, all right? which essentially says that the more simple an exercise is, the safer uh, it will be. And essentially, I created a uh, I created a graph, and here's the graph so that you can see it. So the more simple an exercise is, as you can see, it's a little bit higher in uh, safety. Uh, the more complex an exercise is, it's a little bit lower in safety. Now we have to start off with a base, and the base exercise is going to be the push up. Now, if you uh, consider every client that you've ever trained. Um, I would say that, let's start off with the number, 50% of the people that you can train will be able to do a push-up correctly, a military push-up. And, uh, you know, it actually may be even lower, maybe 40. But for the sake of, you know, this video, we'll say that that number is 50. So, your job as a trainer, especially as a boot camp or group trainer, when you're doing exercises, is to make sure that exercises, that, uh, exercises can be done uh, so that clients, first, are safe, and second, get a good workout. You never want your client to leave worse off than they came in. That's, that should be a rule of thumb. So, uh, for my boot camp and any one of my classes, there's a wide range of, uh, of abilities. So, you'll have people that are very strong. you have people that are complete beginners. And if I were going to throw out just a push-up, it'd be great for you know a small percent, let's say a third of the class, it'd be a little bit easy for um, for some of the best conditioned uh, people in the class, and it would be near impossible for some of the worst conditioned people in the class. And all of this has to go on at the same time because I'm the only person that, that's uh, that's running the class, and there are 16 to 24 people working out at the same time. So the goal is understanding how to make an exercise simple and or more complex while understanding that you, as a group trainer, may have to take your eyes away from people. So, you want to, if you're gonna make an exercise more complex, uh, you're going to have to understand that it, it has to be harder, but not so hard that if you were to take your eyes off the client, then, um, then they wouldn't injure themselves. So, let's talk about how you're gonna make the push-up uh, simpler and safer. So you have a client that's not able to do a push-up correctly. And when you're doing your push-up, let's assume from a military position on the floor that when your arms are extended, the, um, the angle from your, uh, from your toes to the, uh, well, from your shins rather to the floor is about uh, 15 degrees when your arms are fully extended. Now, uh, for a client that doesn't have the upper body strength, doesn't have the abdominal strength, 
uh, or the balance to do a, uh, a push-up. A 15 degree angle for a push-up is going to be a little bit difficult. So, if you're looking to make the exercise simpler and safer, all you're going to do is angular modification, I call it. I'm not even sure if that's a regular, uh, if that's a real term, it's just something I made up. Angular modification going up to the point where the least conditioned client, if you're giving them a push-up, automatically knows that their angular modification is going to be 90%. So essentially they're going to be doing a wall push-up. So when their arms are fully extended, their, uh, their calves are 90 degrees from the floor. So in that respect, as you're making the exercise simpler, you're also making it safer. Now in a boot camp environment, you have to watch a number of different people at the same time. So while you've given this person an exercise, uh, and they're set, and they're you know they're in their set. You may have to watch Mary, uh, who is five feet away, behind you, across the room, depending on how you operate. And you have to know that this client is safe. Uh, the client that you that you left is safe. So that's fine when you're making exercises simpler. But what do you do with the percentage of clients that you have that are a little bit beyond the uh, the push up? Let's take a step back. Some clients make me very upset um, in that when they're exercising, they will claim that an exercise is too easy for them, uh, but they're not doing the exercise correctly. The, the, the one thing that gets on my nerves the most is, uh, is you know, a, a dumbbell row or a one-arm row, uh, where they will say that they want more weight, but they're not able to maintain a neutral spine, um, or they're, they're pulling, you know, way far from their body and they're yanking the weight. And so you have to first understand that when a client complains about an exercise being too easy, it is your first job to make sure that they're doing the exercise correctly um, and without any deviations. Then, once you find that they're doing the exercise absolutely correctly, then you can engage in increasing the intensity or giving them more weight. Now, you guys found me on YouTube. And I know that it's not uncommon for trainers to look on YouTube to get different ideas on different exercises to do. And, you know, I was just, uh, I did a YouTube search for push-up variations. And, you know, I found a lot of videos that gave a lot of cool-looking exercises for push-up variations. And you have to understand that, yes, they are challenging, but your, your first rule is always keep your clients safe. And if you're especially in a boot camp or group training environment where you're going to have to modify or watch multiple people at the same time, you have to make sure that you know that the exercise that you give somebody that is more complex than the standard version of the exercise that you give them for the sake of challenging them is safe enough, is safe enough for them to do it on their own once you turn your back to them. Uh, you have to understand how long you can turn your back to a client before the exercise becomes uh, too unsafe. So I gave various ways of making a push-up more intense and its relative safety um, as it relates to that variation. So if you were going to make uh, a push-up harder, uh, one of the first things that I do uh, with my boot camp is that I recommend that people get weight vests. I think uh, weight vests are one of the safest ways to make an exercise harder um, while not having to worry about you know constantly keeping your eyes on a client because much of the many of the variations that you'll find that are cool looking and challenging are also uh, also have an increased uh, uh, probability for injury. So um, if you wanted to make an exercise harder, I'd say the first thing that you do is that you have them purchase a weight vest. Then you can have them put them on during specific exercises and take them off. I don't think it's a great idea for you to have the weight vests in house because it's weird. As soon as the client thinks that an exercise can be made harder, and I'm talking about this, this client that, uh, that you know, tends to upset me because they're doing it with poor form, they automatically think they need to you know, take it up a notch. Oh, I need to rev it up. Oh, I need a weight vest. So if you have your clients get their own, then you know, you're not holding back anything from this client that I'm talking about, this, this client that, that, thinks they're, that, that thinks they're stronger than they are. So the first thing I would say is, uh, is to get them to, uh, to purchase a weight vest, and then you can increase the intensity there. Now, I don't have it listed on this um, graph, but the next thing that you can consider when you have a client that uh, is not being 
they're very much challenged by you know your workout and in this case this exercise the push up um, is to consider sequence and this will um, speak more toward the personal trainer because in a boot camp environment my workout is essentially set uh, so there isn't much room for modification of the entire workout but if you're a personal trainer and you don't want to have your clients do crazy exercises or exercises that require a large amount of um, balance or a number of different steps that they may or may not be ready for and you have to be easily distracted so you may not be good at spotting or you find yourself losing um, focus which really shouldn't happen but let's be honest it does then um, you may just want to uh, change the sequence of your workout I'm often you know amused by the little guy in the gym that will watch the big guy working out and let's say he's doing bicep curls he's doing 35 pounds um, of bicep curls. He's huge. And then the little guy looks at the big guy and says, oh, he's only using 35 pounds? I can curl 35 pounds. Look at me. I'm just as strong as that guy. You know, but they don't understand everything that this big guy has done. He may be doing, you know, uh, what are those things called? Supersets. Or he may be doing drop sets. And that 35 pounds is after having done, you know, a number of exercises before that. And he's just so plain tired out. 35 pounds is all that he can lift. The same principle can apply to your personal training clients if you find that one exercise isn't particularly challenging for them but you don't want to make it too complex. Change the sequence, change the intensity, change the um, volume of the exercise to make it harder. That way you don't necessarily have to change the basic mechanics of what, in this example, a push-up will require of them, especially if they lack the coordination. So, um, along with the um, the increased intensity with the add with the addition of a weight vest, you may want to consider your entire sequence of the workout and look a little bit further beyond just the exercise. And that way, you'll be able to keep your clients safe. You won't have to challenge yourself in terms of spotting them in all these weird positions. And you know, if for whatever reason your focus tends to um, fall off a little bit, your client isn't in any more danger doing your modification than they would have been otherwise. Now. Let's look at further um, you know, uh, complexities of the push-up that will decrease the, um, the safety of the exercise. We have the um, angular modification to a, a negative, where essentially your client is doing an incline push-up. And you know, their hands on the floor, and instead of the plane where their hands are, uh, their hands are resting on being elevated, the plane where their feet are on are elevated. So when their arms are extended, they're at essentially like a negative 15 degree angle. Now, um, you know, for the most part, that's pretty safe. Um, although most people aren't strong enough to do it well in volume, um, and I'm talking about the general person getting into uh, hiring a personal trainer, um, you're not really challenging yourself or putting yourself in any position where you can't really spot the client. As soon as you see them start to struggle, you can then have them lower the plane that their feet are resting on to the point where they're either doing a regular military push-up or angular modification. You can increase the plane of their hands. That way, the exercise becomes simpler, but safer and still difficult. Now, you start to get a little bit um, more dangerous as you start to incorporate, first, unbalanced planes that their hands will be resting on in the form of BOSU balls or stability balls, so one stability ball underneath one hand and one hand on the floor, or a stability ball underneath uh, each hand for a push-up. Um, because uh, for lack of balance, a hand can roll off, uh, you know, a BOSU ball, your hand can slip off, and then you're at increased risk for injury. And you have to understand that these losses of balance happen very quickly. So you have to be very much uh, aware of what your client is capable of. You have to be very much aware of signs of your client struggling, and you have to be aware of where you would have to be um, if something should go wrong. I'm not totally in love with the idea of everything that involves instability uh, or ball automatically becoming functional. You know, you see people squatting on a, uh, on a, on a Swiss ball and all of a sudden that's functional training because you're, you're shaking. No. You know, I mean, it's balanced training. It's not something about I've ever done. But, you know, you don't necessarily need to do it to make an exercise uh, tougher. If anything else, um, you know, instead of having somebody do a push-up with, you know, a hand underneath uh, 
with medicine balls underneath each hand, at least have a uh, medicine ball under one hand and one hand flat on the floor because your client has a better chance of recovering and catching themselves. Now, as we progress toward complexity in terms of push-up exercises, you have one-handed push-up exercises. Namely, let's say a push-up with a hand clap or a push-up with a knee tuck uh, and a knee touch with your free hand. And those become a little bit more dangerous for your client because all of a sudden now you're, requ you're requiring your client to rest all of their weight on their shoulder, on their one shoulder. Some clients are stronger in one shoulder than the other. Actually, most are. And again, this is not something that I would really have them do in a boot camp unless there's uh, a high angular modification where, you know, essentially doing the knee tuck or, you know, resting on one arm is uh, on a much higher plane than I would have them if they were flat. I hope I'm not being too technical, but this is the way I look at um, the workouts that I put together. And then finally, if you want to make an exercise most complex, then you're going to have an unbalanced surface on one hand. So essentially, you're going to be uh, challenging your clients to do a one-handed push-up uh, with a ball underneath their hand. And sure, you know, you may be able to do it. It's a nice little circus trick. It's something nice to put on Facebook or YouTube to say, hey, look at what I can do. I can make my client, you know, do this really weird looking and tough exercise. And it does, you know, require a lot more balance. It does work more muscles, but it puts the client in much more of a risk for danger. And to be quite honest with you, if your exercises are intense and, um, and if you're staying on top of your client and your sequence is correct, you don't need to put your client in such a position. Moreover, if you're in a boot camp situation and you put Jim, who, who's fairly fit in that position, and you say, okay, Jim, you're going to be doing one-handed push-ups with the ball underneath your hand, switch hands on every five. You happen to turn around and watch Mary, who's, um, you know, who's doing a, a different exercise, and Jim starts to break down. He should stop, but Jim's ego won't let him stop. So, while you have your eyes on Mary, Jim continues to push through. Oh, he's shaking, oh, he's shaking. He doesn't want to put that other hand down. Bam. Jim falls flat. Jim hurts his shoulder, rotator cuff injury, whatever the case may be. He's out six to eight weeks or more, doesn't trust you. All of a sudden, everybody in your boot camp sees, sees that he's injured. You shot yourself in the foot. How long, how safe is it for you to turn your back on somebody when you do an exercise? That should determine... Um, exactly which exercises you choose. If you're in a boot camp setting, you could have your back to one particular person for, let's say in my case, I can have my back to somebody for 30 to 45 seconds at a time, only because I'm roaming around the rest of the room, making sure that everybody's okay, assuming that this person, who may be fairly advanced, is doing the exercise correctly. So I'm not in an instance where I have a client doing a complex exercise going to turn my back to them. If you're in a person, if you're in a personal training realm, sure, you may want to have somebody do uh, a push-up with balls underneath their uh, with medicine balls underneath their hands. But you better believe that you have to be completely, completely and 100% focused on your client while they're doing that exercise. Otherwise, you're putting them in danger. You're not going to turn around when you see your buddy walk into the gym and give him a high five while your client is mid-set with medicine balls underneath their hands doing push-ups. It's just not safe. So then why would you incorporate that into your boot camp? So your goal is to understand um, what is safe um, for clients that you know are below the, uh, the general health scale and how to adequately challenge clients that are above the general health scale um, without putting them in danger. And you have to consider that uh, the more clients that you're training at the same time, the, uh, the less far you can go down the complexity scale in good conscience. Because unless you're training a bunch of you know, gymnasts at the same time, a bunch of high-level gymnasts at the same time, you're not going to want to have your clients do you know, very complex exercises and leave them on their own. Otherwise, you're going to put yourself in a position to uh, get somebody hurt. So, when you're considering what exercises you want to incorporate into your boot camp or into your group training, or even into your personal training uh, session, first uh, consider, you know, um, is my client strong enough to do this exercise? Do I need to modify them to a simpler exercise? Do I need to have, you know, Mary do a military push-up right now? Or should I just grade her into it to ensure her safety? 
regardless of whether or not her ego tells her that she should be able to do it right now. You're the trainer, remain in control, make sure that your client stays safe. If you have a client that is of general strength and um, you know performance uh, and you want to increase them from their uh, push-up to a more uh, complex or difficult exercise, make sure that you do it safely. Understanding first your capabilities as uh, your capabilities as a trainer to be able to spot them correctly, um, your understanding of them as a client to understand when they're starting to struggle. Don't throw a new client on your cool new exercise that you just found on YouTube, uh, lest you end up with an injured client. And um, and when you're going to go too far, how much time can you dedicate to watching this client while they're going? Because the further out the uh, the further out on the complexity scale that you go, the less time that you can afford to lose your focus while you're training your client. So, understand where you are, understand who you're training, understand how many people you're training, understand how much focus you need, and you will avoid having injuries with any of your workouts. My name is Jonathan, I hope you found, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, like this video, comment on this video, add this to your favorites. Um, if you found this to be of particular importance, definitely add this to your favorites because I will routinely change the title of the video or the location uh, because of search engine optimization or because I feel that it's better suited somewhere else on the channel. So if you always want access to this content, add this to your favorites. If you happen to be on Twitter, retweet this video. If you're on the Facebook, share this video because there are a lot of other trainers out there that would not have access to this information if it wasn't for your help. So if you find this to be of any importance, you're getting it for free. Don't try to pay it back. Pay it forward. And last but not least, if you just happen to stumble upon this channel, subscribe to this channel because this is dedicated toward helping people outside of the fitness industry get into the fitness industry, helping personal trainers become better personal trainers or boot camp owners, and helping boot camp owners become extremely successful boot camp owners. So, if you subscribe to this channel, I promise I will do my best to hold your attention. Now, remember, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, private message me on the Facebook, message me on YouTube, or... Um, comment on the video below. I usually say call me, text me, or email me, but I'm getting a large number of, uh, of calls and emails from various different channels, and I want to make sure that uh, everybody gets their questions answered, and the best way is to decrease the amount of, uh, of, of channels that it's coming through. So, best way to reach me, private message me on Facebook after you add me as a friend, or send me a private message on YouTube. Your question may inspire a video, because I really only do uh, videos when I think that they're necessary, or when I find there's a need. So, remember to eat healthy, hydrate, drive safe. Stress levels don't get rest, don't slap anybody. Love your parents, they will love you. Love your parents. Well, yeah, love your parents and love your clients. They will love you back. I will see you all tomorrow or the next day. I think I'm going to go visit my mom. And you have a good one.